We don't have a gold standard for actually being able to establish whether someone has definitely and objectively sustained some injury to their brain as a result of concussion. One of the most commonly used tools out there, especially at the level of sports associations, is the SCAT, which is the Sports Concussion Assessment Tool. There are basically three components of the SCAT. There's the symptoms, so we ask kids about whether they have a headache, if they're feeling nauseous or dizzy, or if they're having trouble remembering. Uh, the tool also looks at their balance, so we ask them to stand with their eyes closed, stand on one leg, and to walk on a straight line. One of the problems with the SCAT is that not only is it not objective, but it's also not very reliable. We know that kids, especially younger kids, are not very reliable in terms of reporting their symptoms. The player will always want to play, uh, and sometimes in generally speaking, the coach will rely on what the player is telling them. And so the player will say, yeah, no, I'm good. And, and will ask to go back in. There really is a need for simple objective tools that will give us a direct measure of what's happening in the brain. EEG stands for electroencephalography. It's actually quite an old technique and has been used for over 100 years. The way that we're using it is different though because it's taking advantage of some of the newer um, and more sophisticated types of analysis. We put the cap on and we just ask them to sit with their eyes closed for five minutes and we're able to extract information about the functioning of their brain just from that five minute activity. So we have the data from the control peoples which don't have any concussion and we have the data from people which do have concussion and based on the computer algorithms we're trying to find the features which kind of tells where, which kind of distinguish between the two groups so these people are healthy and these people are concussed. We had developed an algorithm using our EEG that is able to detect within about 95 percent accuracy whether a child has had a concussion or not. We've just entered into a very exciting partnership I think with the Richmond Football Club. Their board decided this year that they would like to start a program of baseline concussion testing and then follow-up testing if someone has had a concussion. We thought it would be a great fit for Richmond FC because we were trying to develop a program where we could better take care of our athletes and we didn't have anything in place and we thought this would be a great opportunity for us. We want to bring this technology forward and make it available to the public so that there is an objective method of assessing concussions so that physicians may use it to accurately diagnose whether a patient has a concussion. We don't know how often our players get a concussion on the field. We just don't have a process in place where we can act accurately determine. With this new baseline testing where we actually can see before and after if a person is suspected of receiving a concussion, it will go a long way in helping us keep our players safe. We're finding things that no one has really understood before. What we're seeing is that even after one concussion, the brain is actually reorganized as a result of that concussion. And that's where a big focus of my research is, is to figure out how this reorganization, this plasticity that we're seeing in the brain is actually going to play out over a span of one year as these kids recover.